Hey everyone, I'm Natalie and I am back with my videos on the elements. Like I have stated in my other two videos, my fire and my earth video, these videos will apply to psychology because we're going to be talking about Carl Jung's psychological functions and personality because they're the same functions for personality types, which by that I mean like Myers-Briggs personality types, MBTI, and tarot. I'm going to be incorporating tarot cards that have to do with the air element at the end of this video. So today we're going to be talking about the air element and how it is associated with the psychological function of thinking. Now the function thinking is connected to the function feeling and these two show how we process information. Relating it to like your personality type, those who are really strong with thinking, they basically make their decisions based on logic. So the definition of thinking is the process of using one's mind to consider or reason about something. Thinking is also defined as using thought, rational, judgment, and intelligence. So again, relating it to your personality, people strong with thinking, they make objective decisions. They're able to put personal feelings aside to make a logical, detached, and analytical conclusion. They usually examine how they feel about something at a later stage, but overall their feelings rarely get in the way of making a decision in the first place. So the air element is actually extremely important to astrology because the air element is the element that seeks out truth and logic in life. It's needed because it's like a they're cutting edge, their truthfulness. It slices through deception and illusion so that we may be able to see the truth of situations. And this allows things to actually be seen and understood by us and then therefore to be accepted as the truth. So air basically will be able to sort out all the ideas, like especially like the muddled, confused ideas and emotions of the other elements. The more confused that we become, especially with the other elements and functions, the more we need the air element. The more we need the sharp edge of the air's sword <laughs> to cut through the truth. <laughs> so that's like a good segue, I guess, to bring it into tarot because I mean, that's basically what the Ace of Swords is. It's basically like the sword of truth coming through. And to me, when I see this, it's basically like making something known to me. Like when I see this come up in readings, I feel like this is basically like making something known. Like you need to really like pay attention, basically. I mean, I guess you should pay attention regardless of what comes out, but... I don't know, the Ace of Swords really makes me, like, pay attention to things. Um, I also really like the King and Queen of Swords. Um, I always, I know that the Queen of Swords is Aquarius and I know that the King of Swords is Libra. I know, but to me, I still always get Aquarius vibes or energy from both of them. Just because the King and Queen of swords are like more mature with like the air element oh by the way i guess <laughs> mercury's retrograde so i'm sorry but yes swords <laughs> represent the air element i never even said that so the reason i get aquarius energy from these two cards is because they're more like mature with the air element and they're about just saying the truth like saying the blunt honest truth like these two cards are so direct and straightforward to me or they show energy that is very direct and straightforward and to me i feel like aquarius is a sign that doesn't beat around the bush at all so that's why i get aquarius vibes from these two cards a lot like to the point where they'll say things that might be kind of painful to hear but they don't really care. The king and queen of swords don't really care about that. They don't care about your feelings. And to me, the two of swords kind of shows like the unbalance that air can bring. I guess this one is more, could be more for like Gemini and Libra just because it's like you're going back and forth. 
you're not really making a decision because you can't really decide on something. That's how I see the Two of Swords. And you're basically kind of not tapping into your intuition because maybe swords um, or the air element, like the air signs, people strong with the air element or the thinking function, um, you are you think a lot. You're overthinking about stuff. You don't really go with like how you feel. And I feel like the Two of Swords is always a reminder to listen to how you feel. That's why the moon is still there. It's like putting your feelings and your thoughts together. But I think people strong with the thinking function, which is the function that air would be in this case, they don't really do that. So I think that's like a challenge with the air element and the thinking function. I get the same thing from the A and the Nine of Swords. To me, the A... To me, these cards, they both kind of say, like, being trapped in your own mind. Um, and it's kind of like you get to the 10 because you need to release that. And also the 8, too, I guess. You kind of need to, like, release yourself from yourself, your own mind. And the 9 of Swords, I love this card, even though it's, like, a really depressing card. <laughs> I still love it because it's, I don't know, it kind of just shows, like, the, the overthinking and anxiety that people can have, like the air element, the kind of darker side of the air element, the overthinking, the anxiety, and people even strong with like the thinking function. I think this card kind of shows like the dark side of it. So those are the cards in the suit of swords, which is associated with the air element that kind of stand out to me in representing the thinking function. So in the Major Arcana, the Major Arcana is the um, set of cards in tarot that show like life uh, progressions, I guess, like your steps towards um, like a journey, like if your journey was in a line and it was like step by step, the Major Arcana cards show the steps in a journey towards something. It could be life, it could be a journey towards anything that has a start and end, which I mean, all life does, so. We have the Lovers, which is Gemini. I love this card. This is, like, one of my favorite cards in tarot. Um, to me, this shows, like, the duality of Gemini. Um, yes, this is, like, a love card, and when you get it, it's supposed to show, like, a union of people. But I, in terms of Gemini, I see it as, like, the duality nature of Gemini, because we've got the Tree of Knowledge and the Tree of Life here, and technically both of them are kind of needed for life. Um... The man is looking to the woman, the woman is looking to spirit to guide her. So to me, this just shows like the duality nature, the two sides of Gemini coming and uni unionizing, which is what Geminis have to do with themselves, basically unionize their sides to them. And then we have justice, which is Libra. We've got the scales here. Kind of the same thing with Libra. They've got to like balance their shit. They've got to also balance other people's shit, which kind of sucks. Sorry that you have to think about other people, but neighbors are good at it, so I guess they don't really care. They have to find justice in the world. They have to balance the world, basically, like weigh out the good and bad. And then my another favorite card of mine in tarot is the star. I love this card. This is Aquarius. And I love it because it's, it means hope. It means not losing hope, not losing faith. Literally look into the stars and like, look, I mean, this is a woman, but she's got the water pouring out, which to me shows like the water bearer, giving the water of knowledge and information to give us hope about something, to help us see truth in something, which is what Aquarians do. And then as for planets, we've got the Fool, which starts the Major Arcana. This is Uranus. Uranus brings about changes, brings about beginning something by changing things up. So this is like the start of the journey, the Fool. We've got the Magician, Mercury, which Mercury rules Gemini. Venus, the Empress, which Venus rules Libra. And then Saturn, which is the co-ruler of Aquarius along with Uranus. 
those are the cards in tarot that are associated with the air element and I guess like the thinking function. Hopefully I didn't go through that too fast. Hopefully it kind of made sense and it was interesting to you. If you know your personality type, are you someone who's really strong with thinking? And maybe a challenge for you is being too in your head all the time. I can imagine that that would drive some people crazy with that. And look at your chart, like your astrology chart. Look at where the air signs are in your chart, because this is kind of how you can see where the thinking function plays out the most in your life. And if you have tarot cards or if you're into it, I mean, look at the pictures because they kind of show like the progressions of the thinking function in a way. Like they kind of show the process of like these thoughts that we have or the air element. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week with my last video.